So I am looking at a Retina S reflex camera. This is a camera from the late 50s. I think it was introduced in 1959. So it's part of a long series of Retina cameras, both rangefinders and SLRs. And I bought it because I wanted to try these lenses, the DKL mount. Um, this camera has um, a leaf shutter on the body. The mount uh, has the aperture control on the body itself. And I wanted to try these lenses on digital. Anyway, I got this in ugly condition from KEH and it was only like $27 or so. And it's ugly because it's missing like a little cap up here, even though everything in the camera works, even this control for ASA and the, the, um, the meter uh, works and everything just works in the camera. I should, I should try to run some film through it. I haven't done that. Anyway, I wanted, as I said, to try these lenses or at least one of them on digital. And what I did is I bought an adapter. There's adapters for anything you want, for like Sony and Fuji, etc. But I got an adapter for Pentax. So what that lets me do is I can mount the adapter lens to Pentax to, well, the Sony or the Fuji through an extra adapter. And then on top of that, I can use things like this close focus adapter that lets me focus much closer. Closer focusing distance originally for this lens appears to be something like three feet. Um, with the close-up adapter, I can, I can focus super close. The lens has some nice features like, for example, the aperture control, as I said, it's in the camera originally, here is in the adapter. But as you change the aperture, you get this really nice depth of field indication that is mechanical with those two little red tabs there. This seems completely over designed, kind of unnecessary, like you could print a scale there like most lenses have and be done. Uh, adds complexity mechanically to the lens, etc, etc. But uh, it's really nice, it's a beautiful detail uh, and it's there. And I guess it's from a time when the industry was learning how to implement these things. Um, I suppose for a designer it's not totally obvious immediately that like, you can just print the scale there and have the, the user figure it out instead of uh, actually explicitly putting the, the depth of field in there. Um, the lens has a really nice look. It is very, very, very sharp in the center. It has very nice separation between what's in focus and what's out of focus, even though it's only 2.8. And I don't know if that's uh, me just being biased by the fact that it's an old lens, blah, blah, blah. But it felt a little bit different than other lenses. It felt like I'm focused on something out there and the, the thing is in focus and the background is out of focus and that's extremely clear. And there's very nice separation, very clear separation between those two things. And the other thing that surprised me that again, it might be completely subjective is the color. There's this quality to the colors of this lens where sometimes reds kind of jump at you a little bit and it has kind of like a little bit of a vintage feel to it. The kind of look that you get in all magazine photographic reproductions where color separation was done in a way where colors were very, very different layers uh, and there would be very, very extreme differences between colors. And that happened with this lens as well. Again, it might be subjective impression and, and not a real thing, but I really liked shooting with it. It is, as I said, very sharp you can get extreme detail in the center. There is a bit of unsharpness on the edges, as you would expect for what was basically a kit lens at the time. But it becomes really pleasant to shoot with and the quality is really interesting and you can say vintage. So in that sense, I liked it very, very much. One thing that I would like to do is maybe make a little collection of these DKL lenses. Well, what else is new, right? Uh, I know it's an addiction. I believe the widest lens that they have is a 28 and there's up to like 125, 150, 135, I guess, 150, something like that. Um, and they're not extremely expensive. As I said, this was $27, including the body, which is very nice. And you can find them for like 40, 50, $80 and so on. 
anyway, that's that. Um, it, it's a lens that makes really nice images and it's worth trying. Thank you for watching and until the next video, cheers and goodbye.